Hello everybody and once again welcome to another episode of Rosham Joe Paints. As always my name is Joe and today I'm going through all of the pre-painting work for the Death Guard Lord of Virulence uh, that was newly released by Games Workshop. What I want to do is be able to explain how I put together the model, what you're going to be looking at when uh, if you pick one up yourself, and uh, kind of the general sub-assemblies and maybe even paint schemes that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so, short intro through, let's get started. So here we have the model in hand, and as with every model that you'll ever have, you got to uh, start with the box and figure out what's inside. So let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. So now obviously I'm being a little stupid because there's not a whole lot going on with this box. But, you know, got to start somewhere. You got to set the bar at a certain level and then either crawl under it or go over it. Who knows? Uh, so basically, you got a 50, 50 millimeter circle that he's going to be using for his base. You got your instruction booklet. And then, of course, you have your sprue. Now, uh, first thing I noticed when I looked at this sprue was that um, there are tons and tons of little extra pieces that get... Uh, glued on to his face to his arms to his back etc so like this is a piece that goes onto his arm and then you have his helmet here but on his helmet i believe it's this piece over here and this piece right here which get glued to the side luckily though um looks like i'm going to be able to either glue these pieces after to the face and then glue the face as one assembly to the body um versus having to try and paint them off of the um or paint them after everything has been assembled. So I'm a big fan of painting things in sub-assemblies just to try and get as much painted um, that I can. His cloak is in two pieces, which is going to be interesting. What I'm going to try to do with the cloak, at least, is to assemble both pieces of the cloak together, and then kind of like with Nagash, where you kind of, kind of just push them into place. I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that here, um, but I'll be dry-fitting everything first. So... First thing first, I'm going to go through and probably put the main body together and leave most of these tiny little pieces on the sprue where all of the numbers are so I can see what is going on. And then uh, uh, the arms, body, and cloak pieces uh, are probably what I'm going to be pulling off. And then we'll see what, uh, as far as dry fit goes, uh, how it works. So I did want to show you really quick in case you uh, haven't built one of these before. Um, not this particular model, but models in general, there's two ways to cut these things off the sprues. And, um, if it's up right up against an edge, like let's say this arm right here, right? Um, if you don't want to damage the shoulder piece, you can cut it closer back here, uh, just to get it off the sprue and then use your hobby knife or something like that later, uh, to get closer to actually cutting that piece off. If it is something, let's say, on like the bottom of the shoe, where did it go? Here's, um, where like, yeah, it had its big chunk of plastic here. Um, I basically just came right up against the sprue piece and cut that off straight. Still came back in with a hobby knife to clean up the edges, but at least how I build the models, I'm gonna have the basing material. It's gonna cover, you know, a little bit of this bottom of the foot. Now, something I didn't expect to see because this is a new, uh, a new casting was the amount of mold lines on, on this and kind of, uh, you know, kind of annoying actually. So you can tell that the mold, um, when I say the mold lines, it's this, it's this line that's right here and, um, I won't focus, but once I get it to, you can kind of see what I'm talking about right here. So on the back of the foot, there's a line that goes here, there, and then down this. And it also, it came up this piece here and it continues up the leg here. Now it's also on the front as well as a very prominent line that goes from, you know, over the foot, up the shin, up the knee pad, and you can kind of follow it the entire way. So you can ignore them completely and just paint them all little and enjoy yourself. Um, or you could also take the back of a hobby knife, depending on, you know, how comfortable, how comfortable you are with it and do a little bit of like just scraping down. 
you just want to knock the edge down. You don't want a sharp edge there that'll catch in like when you're doing dry brushing or even if you're doing shading because that'll definitely give you a hard line. Um, the nice part about doing something on a death guard is if you accidentally nick uh, part of the armor out, it's not going to matter because look how many bullet holes and decaying armor you got. So just count that or chop that up to more uh, more damage. So um, main suggestion uh, to anyone who's who's looking to get rid of those is just make it look more natural. Um, you're not going to have a lot of straight lines that follow a specific uh, armor panel beyond that armor panel. So like if it was just this shin and nothing else, okay, sure. Maybe it's just the shin that has some sort of seam there. But when it like when it when it transfers over, that's when I want to get rid of it. So I'm gonna spend some time cleaning up uh, this model the best I can, just getting it to a point where once I start painting it, I'm not really gonna see it. So that's what I'm gonna do and move on. So here we go. After all is said and done, this is what I ended up with. Um, I put all of the pieces on the hand, except for this little. Uh, hoses and whatnot. So I'm going to be able to paint everything and then later on grab a little bit of super glue probably and tuck this underneath and into place here. This went a lot better when I did it before. There you go. So, um, but that way at least I can hit a lot more of the glove and get into the details on the side over here uh, with that part uncovered. So that is one section. Let me go ahead and move to the other arm. The other arm, we had his hand get glued on here and the other half of the gun get glued on there. The only other piece to glue on here is this, again, kind of a hose slash flesh slash oh, something. And this goes right here. It connects these three pieces together like that. And obviously with it sitting in front of a lot of detail there, uh, just to make my life easier, I'm gonna paint that separately and put it on the gun later. But with it off, I can hit all of those parts. So those are the two arms done. His face, this is, I had a little bit of I was wondering if I was going to keep these hoses off. However, I do like the ability uh, to just hold the head and be able to do all this. And what's kind of nice is a nice big slot right here. And it just kind of pushes into place just like that. So a um, little bit of glue here, dab of glue on the back of the head, and you are good to go just like that. So I'll be able to paint the head in a sub assembly. Now the hardest part, the part that I was worried about, but it's very much like Nagash. Now, I'm not going to glue this to the uh, to the base, but I think you could technically. So I found that if you, so you're holding this, you bring them in and instead of trying to push down or up or whatever, come in with one leg and just kind of file the leg through. And now we are going to, nope, hang on, where did I put it? Right, cut, anyways. Um, so just like that. So now he's inside of his little skirt. There are three points where it actually connects. So what I'm going to focus on is getting the back point set up like just like that. Now we're in place and Lee look at the front and they're basically already lined up. Um, so there you go. Can just glue that into place. But in the meantime, you will have been able to get to all of that detail under there as well as all of the detail uh, on the actual little flush skirt whatever this is called. And there you go. So we'll paint the body, paint the skirt separate, push them together, paint the arms separate, pop them on, paint the head separate, pop it in, and we're done. How about that? And there you have it, the Death Guard Lord of Virulence in sub-assemblies, ready to be painted and put on the table. Speaking of painting, I'm going to be painting this in the Tainted Suns uh, scheme, and I'm probably going to follow pretty close to what the recommendation online is for painting him, but they did miss a couple of things, so it's going to be close to the box art. I might have to improvise a little bit here and there, and overall I'll be talking about techniques and paints that I'm using and things like that as well as whatever else comes to mind because that's just kind of how my videos go. So 
If, uh, if you're interested in seeing how I paint this one, make sure to set a Google reminder so that you can come back to this video daily to see if I've added an update or that seems too much, too much trouble. Go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you'll know when new content comes out. Uh, hopefully, because I put this video or this, this video out, you won't have to sit through 15 minutes or so of an explanation of how I set the model up at the paint video and we can just get right on into painting. So, uh, once again, if you made it this far into the video, thank you very much and uh, I will see you next time. Have a good one.